Another U.S. bank has failed. This time it was Citizens Bank of Sac City, Iowa. It was announced late last night in a Friday news dump from the FDIC that this small community bank in rural Iowa was taken into FDIC receivership. And while this isn't necessarily a continuation of the banking crisis from March, this is indicative that there are other, more structural problems in the U.S. economy that we haven't seen show up in the banking system yet, that is, until last night. What's up, guys? I'm Nobody Special, and here you go. Just hit the tape last night from the FDIC. Iowa Trust and Savings Bank of Emmitsburg, Iowa, assumes all of the deposits of Citizens Bank of Sac City, Iowa. So if you used to have your money in this bank, your money is still there. The thing is, Monday morning when you wake up, you'll suddenly be a customer of Iowa Trust and Savings Bank. The same branches will still open up just under the different name. As of September 30th, 2023, Citizens Bank had approximately $66 million in total assets and $59 million in total deposits. In addition to assuming all of the deposits, Iowa Trust and Savings Bank agreed to purchase essentially all of the failed bank's assets. So $66 million in assets and $59 million in deposits, this bank should have been in the black by about $7 million. According to these numbers, it doesn't look like there's any problem here. But things get worse in this last paragraph. The FDIC estimates that the cost to the deposit insurance fund will be $14.8 million. So not only has that $7 million of capital at the bank been wiped out, but there's an additional $14.8 million hit to the deposit insurance fund. So this bank lost somewhere around $21.8 million on just $59 million in deposits. So somebody at this bank screwed up big time. Now, if you're wondering what the deposit insurance fund is, that's the money that insures all bank deposits in the United States. It's comprised of fees that are charged to all the member banks. They pay a fraction of a percent of all the transactions into this fund so that if any banks ever fail, that fund will make up the difference. And this way, the government is able to maintain faith and trust in the banking system. So the taxpayers are kind of on the hook for this $14.8 million in that it is coming out of Uncle Sam's checking account but that money has been made up of fees the banks pay into the system, fees that are ultimately sourced from fees you pay every time you do business at a bank. But I want to focus in on that $7 billion in capital that was wiped out and that $14.8 million hit to the DIF. This bank lost over $21 million, and this wasn't a very big bank. And just to give you an idea, this is Citizen Bank of Sac City, Iowa's website. Now, I just want to mention real quick that there are 13 citizens banks in the United States. So when you're doing your own homework on this topic, make sure you search Citizens Bank of Sac City because there are 13 citizens banks and there are 155 banks in the United States with the word citizens in the name. So it's really easy to get your banks mixed up here. So what we're looking at here is the year end statement of condition at this bank. This is showing what the balance sheet was at least at the end of 2022. And they're showing you here where the bank had their money. They had about $10.3 million in cash. They had about $16.4 million in bonds and other agencies or probably mortgage-backed securities. And they had about $27.8 million in loans. Now, remember, this bank hit $14.8 million to the DIF, plus about $7 billion in capital wiped out. So somewhere in here, they lost $21.8 million. This is not just another case of unrealized losses from U.S. Treasuries, which is what took down Silicon Valley and Signature Bank. It's not just another case of mortgages to ritzy houses like what took down First Republic. Something bigger happened at this bank here, and it wiped out a major portion of their loan book. They lost $21.8 million, and they only gave out $27.8 million in loans. And there was one important clue that I found in this article from local news outlet SiouxLandProud.com. Sac City Bank declared insolvent after examiners identified significant loan losses. The release states that bank examiners identified significant loan losses that had not previously been identified by the bank while conducting an examination of the bank. Officials said Citizens Bank had a concentration of out-of-territory and out-of-state loans to one industry and then suffered heavy losses from some of those loans, the bank has since been declared insolvent. So somewhere in that $27 million loan book, this bank managed to lose almost $22 million. They didn't just lose a little bit of money on non-performing loans. They lost almost everything in their loan book. And what they're saying here is it was out-of-territory, out-of-state loans to one industry. 
Now, when I heard this and when I saw the size of the losses, my initial reaction was, okay, maybe it was something like crypto or maybe even commercial real estate, because that's the only place where the losses have been on such a high percentage in recent years that you could explain how so much of this loan book disappeared. But my initial guess was wrong. And I found the answer here on Bank Reg Blog on Substack, who in very short order put together a fantastic piece of research on this bank failure in less than 24 hours. This thing was just announced last night. And it looks like Bank Reglog found what the problem is. I'm going to put a link down below so you can read this for yourself. And in Bank Reg Blog's post on Substack, he linked to this consent order between the FDIC and the Iowa Superintendent of Banking as communicated to Citizens Bank of Sac City, Iowa. And within this consent order is a clue as to that one particular industry where Citizens Bank lost all that money in their loan book. And it was on page two of that consent order that we had this section where the bank was ordered to hire a loan consultant. Within 30 days from the effective date of this order, the board must engage an independent third-party loan consultant who shall possess the requisite knowledge, skills, ability, and workout experience, including problem loan workout experience. The consultant will have full authority and discretion to administer and service the bank's commercial trucking loan portfolio, including the development of the credit risk reduction plan identified below. And there you have it, folks. It looks like that is what took this bank down. It was the bank's commercial trucking loan portfolio that was identified back in August as exceptionally risky, and the bank was ordered to go out and hire a consultant who knew how to fix bad loans in the trucking industry in order to try and save this bank. They were ordered to do that within 30 days. That was a few months ago, and it looks like the losses in their loans to commercial truckers were too much. They were not able to solve this problem. So while 2023 has seen no shortage of bank failures, we saw Silicon Valley Bank, Signature Bank, Silvergate Bank, Credit Suisse, First Republic Bank, PacWest, Heartland Tri-State Bank, all of these banks have failed. This is something new. This is the first bank that has been taken down by losses in commercial trucking. Not mortgages, not U.S. treasuries, but commercial trucking. And this is interesting because just a few years ago, we were talking about how the commercial trucking industry was booming. Do you remember the shortage of truck drivers? Remember the backup at U.S. ports, how we just couldn't get those container ships offloaded? Well, during that time, a lot of new people got into the trucking business, people who had no prior experience. There was all of this sudden demand. Everybody was given stimmies. They had money. They went out and spent it. They ordered stuff. There was nothing to do. You couldn't go out and do anything. So you just stayed home and you shopped on Amazon and people bought crap with printed money that was given to them by Congress and the Federal Reserve. That created this massive surge of demand for truck drivers. Coincidentally, it also created inflation. And then in order to solve that inflation, the Federal Reserve raised interest rates right as life got much more expensive for people. And so all of a sudden, that big surge of demand for trucking turned into way too many trucks and not enough stuff moving. And it was that incredibly fast boom-bust cycle in trucking that's led to some pretty high-profile bankruptcies in the logistics industry this year. Remember Yellow Trucking, who went down just a few months ago? When they went under, 30,000 jobs disappeared overnight. And more recently, we had Seattle-based tech company Convoy, who fancied themselves kind of like the Uber or Airbnb of commercial trucking. They went from a $3.8 billion valuation just 18 months ago to filing for bankruptcy just a few weeks ago. So if you really want to know what took down Citizens Bank of Sac City, Iowa, it wasn't the sudden rise of interest rates like what took down Silicon Valley and Signature Bank. It wasn't bloated mortgages to wealthy people like took down First Republic. It wasn't even the truck drivers who took down this bank. It was these two. It was Janet Yellen and Jerome Powell, and by extension, the U.S. Congress. They created such a massive dislocation in the commercial shipping business that we went from this massive boom caused by their money printing and their stimmies and their inflation. And then in order to fight that inflation, they slammed on the brakes of the economy, jacking up interest rates. They did that right as prices were rising, and now people couldn't afford to buy anything. And all of a sudden, all those new trucks on the road had nothing to carry. And now those truckers are all defaulting on their loans. And this little bank in Sac City, Iowa has just failed because of it. 
Anytime these big government bureaucrats start messing with the money supply or messing with the interest rates, it throws off the natural order of things in the economy. And much like the butterfly effect, the law of unintended consequences, the next thing you know, a few years down the line, you've got trucking companies are going into default and banks are failing because of it. You want to know why this little bank in Iowa failed? That's why. Till next time, live small and dream big.